All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I think I spoke a little too loudly. New microphone. Let's see. It's actually right out of camera. Like, I did. like I'm touching the microphone right now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what we're gonna do today or tonight, in my scenario, is we're gonna connect the server and the client projects together because. You know, I, I wanted to start doing some client stuff, but you know, I realized that there's gonna be some shared logic between both the server and client. Anything like the structs or whatever the case may be that we send over the network, just shared functionality that we might want to have. It's nice to be able to, you know, create, change a file and have it reflect both on the client and the server. So how are we going to do that? We're going to do that with packages again touching packages again. Let me open here a browser and let's search for a Unity Package Manager. <laughs> My keyboard is disconnected, so Unity Package Manager. And what's nice about the Package Manager is that it has local, can use local paths, right? So let me see from a local folder. I guess that does the Package Manager allow you to do that directly? So add from disk. Yeah, I think this is what we want. Yeah, package JSON. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, server, pixel server. This is our GitHub. We're going to go to the server. And somewhere in here, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this uh, shared, just because I don't know what else to call it. So this is going to be all the things that are present both in Unity and to the server. So we can, you know, place things here that show on both sides. And first things first, we're just going to create a package.json. And we need to set some required information. If we look... We need to find the original one. I think it's this one. If we look at creating a package... Package... Re create creating custom packages. There are some required fields, creating custom packages. Why is it so hard to find it? Required and recommended fields. There you go. So this, these are the required ones, right? No, recommended, required. So name and version. There you go. So we have to create an object. The name is just going to be 3D pixels shared. I don't think dots are allowed. Are they allowed? No, they are definitely allowed. Uh, and then the next one that's required is the version, which we don't really care about it. We're just going to stick it to 000. What is it complaining about? Does not match pattern. Is it because of the... Oh, I guess it doesn't like the capitals. Um, there are some rules in here that are a little bit weird, like naming your package. So for example, start with the main, I guess technically it would be something like uh, dev.written.3dpixels for the package name, right? Something like that, ah, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah, it can contain periods, this, this, and this. There's a bunch of rules that you have to follow, otherwise the package will, won't be considered as valid. Whatever the case may be, uh, we have to add it now. So we should be able to just do from disk and go to our shared package and add it. So let's see what's happening. Please wait, it's installing. Oh, there you go, installing, and there you go. So it created the meta file. Usually packages are read-only, which makes sense because if you're loading it from a GitHub URL repo or whatever the case may be, you don't necessarily have push permissions or <laughs> you don't want to be editing it because it's going to differ from somebody else's cache. But when it's local files, like a local directory like this, you have write permissions. So you can edit the scripts and they will reflect in here. Just as an example, this is inside... This should be inside here, so look at it. This is our package. And we can come in here and create a C-sharp script, C -sharp script, which in this one, for example, you can't because it's it's an actual, you know, it's a remote thing. Anyways, so let's create a script in here uh, and let's just have it be some sort of test potentially. Yeah, why not? Let's just do a test script and see what happens, see if we can reference it from the server. So 
now we gotta be careful. We I don't want to give the server you know access to the Unity library just because I want it to be as lightweight as possible. There's no reason to give it a bunch of DLL files with a bunch of editing code when it doesn't need them. Uh, also, let me just check my task manager real quick. Make sure there's nothing that there's some stuff eating up my CPU right now. And I guess it's just Ryder. He's seeing like 60% of my CPU. My video is a little bit choppy, that's why I was questioning it. Okay. Let's try this again. Alright, so this time around it went faster and it's not in as much memory. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know why I had to open. Maybe it was from some previous working stuff. Yeah, um, okay, so <laughs> again, since we're not going to have the Unity engine, we cannot include the Unity engine in the shared stuff, otherwise one of the projects won't compile. And all I want to do really is just say something like, I don't know, public, static, void, uh, speak. And I'm going to say console.write line, hello world. We can potentially do something like if Unity engine, engine, is it if Unity engine <laughs> or is this if Unity? Well, one sec, let me just, let's just do this. So C sharp check if it's Unity or preprocessor directives, I think it's the thing. So it's the Unity conditional compilation. If Unity stands alone, Unity editor. I wanna, isn't there one that tells me if, you know, we are in a Unity project? WebGL, server, hmm, maybe not. Editor version scripting. I guess we could cheat on this. I don't know, does this check? And if. <laughs> oh, wowzy. How do I check if, you know, if I'm, well, I guess I could check if it's a WebGL thing. So technically, this should be WebGL because don't I, didn't I have my build settings? Yeah, it's set to WebGL. So this should technically compile, yet it's not compiling. Oh, you know, I'm so dumb. I can just come in here, player settings. There's somewhere scripting symbols, and then I'm just gonna say Unity, and I'm going to apply. <laughs> Sometimes it's not worth over getting hacked. And then I'm going to say if Unity uh, do something. La. Elif. L. Elif. Do something else. So if, if it's Unity, this is taking a while. My CPU is. Alright, are we back? I guess so. Anyways, the autocomplete sort of knows what I want to do. So this is exactly what I wanted to do. I'm going to compile this. Everything compiled just fine. Because, you know, there's no reason for it not to have compiled just fine. For some reason, this script isn't... Uh, oh, I know why. So, we want to go to our... I think it's preferences. Uh, external tools. Local packages. Regenerate. It should do this a little better, right? Hello? Maybe I need to reopen the C-sharp project. It doesn't quite seem like it's doing anything other than considering this as IL code, which it's a little bizarre. Do I need to... I, don't know, is, I mean, this should be local packages, right? So embedded packages? Is this considered an embedded package? I don't, I don't know. I mean, what if I select all of them? <laughs> well, okay, it's syncing. I'm gonna pause because it's gonna eat my CPU. Well, I mean, it's still doing things, but I, I, I would expect it to be... Oh, there's a lot of files that it's checking. Let's maybe redo this. Get packages. Don't do them. Built-in packages. Down. Local. No, I'm not using that. Oh, maybe this is what was... Player project. Okay, let's regenerate it here. And 
and okay so it's syncing projects now let's see let's see if it's better now maybe because it didn't know where it's coming from but you know i i set local packages we'll see if this helps could also be a rider thing no because it knows that this is re read only and it knows that this is you know not <laughs> read only interesting you know, of all of all things, I didn't expect this to be the thing that is pulling me down right now. So, it's not giving me proper highlighting. But, okay, let's not worry about this for now. Let's just make sure we can use it here. So, if we go to our solution, we won't be... Oh, already see... Oh, is it already... Did I... Wow, did, I, did it already pick it up? Oh, is it not elif? Else? Oh, of course it's else. Wow, I didn't even put a condition there. Duh. Oh yeah, if you change it in one place, it's gonna change it in the other. Which is also the great thing about this. So if I change this here, it's gonna also replicate here. So for example, see, I have nothing going on. Nothing needs to recompile. Uh, I'm this is the server project, this has nothing to do with Unity. And I say hello world from Unity, and I save, and I come back, it's recompiling. So it's a pretty cool system. Um, and now, I guess, let's just say on the program at the beginning here, we're going to do a test.speak. I'm curious how this will work, or if this will work. Technically it should. It's taking a while to load a lot of this stuff. And like here doesn't know what to do with this. I'm not quite sure what is happening, but it does seem to be working because it's saying hello world in here. But I, highlighting is broken. If I say find all references, doesn't find them. But it compiles just fine. This is very interesting. And I guess just for testing, well, let's do test.speak. Oh, does not exist in the current context. Oh, did, yeah, we did have a thing here. I think, well, I don't think we have to create here. Okay, so we have to create an, uh, an assembly definition. So let's say, 3D pixels that shared. I really just deleted all that by accident. I guess this is gonna recompile. Oh, oh yeah, it's not compiling because it doesn't know this yet. But this looks, this looks good to me. So then we're gonna go over here to scripts, add, uh, we're gonna add this shared thing, apply, and now this should compile. This is nothing. I still find it weird. Do I need to maybe refresh something? Can I rebuild? I'm gonna try and restart Visual Studio. There's a chance that it's not added to the solution, but it's weird because it compiled fine. Anyway, so if I play here, I should see a hello world uh, if from Unity or whatever, whatever we changed it. Yeah, hello world from Unity, and we're calling the same function here, and you know, it's saying hello world, which is what we expect. But the only thing that I'm trying to figure out now, which is, I guess, probably something that I'm going to try to figure out for the rest of this video, <laughs> if it doesn't work properly. For how long am I? 16 minutes already, damn. Is, why isn't this working? Oh, okay, now, oh, and now it even works here. Interesting. So everything here got picked up correctly for some reason. I can see the usages. 
I know why I think it got picked up correctly, because Unity requires any scripts inside packages to be inside uh, assembly definitions. You need an assembly definition on the packages, otherwise it won't include the scripts that, you know, that are just loose. Which is not a bad thing. Oh, and now after restarting, we also see this here. Cool. This is awesome. Yeah, I guess we can keep this a short one. <laughs> Just how to get Unity and share files across different different things. Which is pretty cool. Well, now that we are here, actually, before we dive into something else, let's create a, a, a longer that's common between two of them. Because, you know, see, here we can log, but I don't want to do this every single time. So what we could do is just, well, actually we could create a, and just a new script. Uh, we're gonna call this, I don't know, my logger or logger, logging, logger. Just call it logger, simplest thing. And again, we don't want none of that. I do want it to be static. It's just gonna be one logger, no more. No reason to have more than one and essentially we're gonna have this except this is gonna be like log and then a string message right and then here we put the message if we're unity and if not unity we're gonna do a console right line we could also do something like log on server and say if it isn't Unity, do that. Ooh, good thing that uh, I did that by accident because I do need to import system for console that whatever to work. And then log on client. So if it is Unity, then do this. And here, I guess we could also do this since we are in the habit of. And maybe let's also do this for exceptions. Exceptions probably don't want to log on only for one or the other. So let's log. Well, instead of that, we could just say exception. Exception. For Unity, there's a simple thing where we can just log the exception. Yet for this dude down here, we're going to do something a little more different. Oh. Yeah, okay, well, I we no longer need this. Where we say something like error message. Maybe before we saying the message, we say, well, I guess we could say uh, this, that, uh, get type that name. So we know what else is there on the default exception. Help link, stack trace. Yeah, I think we good. And close. <laughs> oh, there you go. So we can put this back. All right. So in this scenario, we could just say no longer that log uh, world without having to worry about where we are. And you can see it automatically updated here. And this should be, it should compile just fine. Hello world, fancy. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna stop this here. A little short one to, to change things a little bit. And in the next one, we're gonna start dealing with how we can easily send data over the network and, you know, identify what we're saying. Because, you know, if you're saying something, there's a lot of, nuance. We're gonna see this next next episode.